thank you very much. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Welcome first to Betty and Steve. You're our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? I've known this lady for 52 years. She's my mother. Marvellous. Have you, have you paired each other in, in, in general knowledge quizzes before? Um, we've done a number of, you know, sort of uh, fun quizzes and pub quizzes and things like and that. And you, you sort of complement each other well? Do you, in, in a manner of speaking, she tells me what to do and I do as I'm told. Perfect. <laughs> uh, keep it that way and you should do very well this afternoon. <laughs> uh, welcome back to Gary and Paul. You were on the show last time. We give everyone two chances to reach our final. Today is your final chance. Can you remind us how you two know each other? We do musicals together. We met doing Crazy For You, the Gershwin musical, and have done musicals how many do a year? One a year? or uh, Two a year two, normally. Two, two a year. Two a year. That Resting heavy work. Yeah, Very, that's a it. massive commitment. Well, best of luck this afternoon. Welcome to Linda and Margaret. How do you two know each other? Where are you from? Uh, we're sisters. We live near Stoke-on-Trent, which is really handy because Linda's always on uh, duty for babysitting for me. You're not originally from Stoke, though, are you? I no, we're not. Yet. We're from Bears Den, which is just outside Glasgow. Well, lovely to have you here. Best of luck on the show. Finally, we've got Fergus and Emma. You were on the show last time. Remind us how you two know each other. Um, we know each other through our choir. Um, Fergus kind of pops in when he's going up and down the country and spends, <laughs> a, night, and spends, a, spends a night on my floor. I've never slept in your floor. I'm always in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> OK. <laughs> he gets his own duvet. Dear, oh dear. Well, very best of luck to you today. We'll get to know more about you all throughout the show. Before I go any further, it'd be quite wrong if I didn't introduce the man with all the facts and figures, the man who plans the whole thing, who knows everything, my pointless friend, Richard. Uh, a good show today. We've got two returning couples. We've got Paul and Gary. I think Blackadder tripped them up last time. And we've also got um, Fergus and Emma. They messed up last time because Fergus sort of took charge gave Emma a series of very, very bad pieces of advice. So I think hopefully if Emma takes charge of their team today, I think they, uh, I think they may be our winners. Oh, no. That's oh, your no. tip. Oh, dear. Yeah. Get the duvet out. Right, OK. <laughs> We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, our players need to score as few points as they can. And they do that by coming up with those obscure answers that as few of those 100 people gave as possible. The thing everyone's looking to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave, but is still a correct answer. Each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, the jackpot hasn't been won in the last three shows. We add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at a staggering... There it is, £5,750. Brilliant. <laughs> OK, let's play Pointless. So in the first round, each of you needs to give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated and you have to be careful because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. And you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, guys, our first category this afternoon is... Singing Legends. Singing Legends. Gary and Paul, looking quite hopeful there. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? Okay. <laughs> and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what our first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Tom Jones top 40 singles as they could. Richard. Yeah, simply looking for any single that reached the UK top 40 for which Tom Jones uh, is credited as performer. There are 36 Tom Jones top 40 singles, 36 of them. OK, Betty and Steve, you all drew lots for the show and today you get to go first. Steve, Tom Jones, you're a fan of Tom Jones? I like some of his ones, yes, yeah. Um, I think he's better now he's let his hair go natural. <laughs> yes, you know, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. It was, it was, it was eerily dark for a it, number of spookily, years. Spookily, yeah. Anything leaping out to you as a really good, obscure Tom Jones single? I'm thinking from the 60s, What's New Pussycat? Very good. You're hoping to score as few points as possible with that answer. Let's put it to the test. Let's see how many of our 100 people said What's New Pussycat? Thank <laughs> you. 
That scores you 19, Steve. 19. What's new, Pussycat? Yeah, uh, written by Burt Bacharach, reached number 11 in 1965. OK, Paul. Yes. I am going to bring it a bit more up to date, really. OK. In the 1960s, I was very young when he was singing those songs. Alexander. Um, if you're accepting duets, I think he did a duet with Karis Matthews. Mm. Uh, called Baby It's Cold Outside. Baby It's Cold Outside, duet with Keris Matthews. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. Good. Oh. Oh. So close. Well played. That scores you five. Baby, it's cold outside. Yeah, 1999, a duet with uh, Keris Matthews. So we'd also count in the category Keris Matthews' top 40 singles, which we haven't done that yet, have we? No. It's weird. Perhaps, we uh, perhaps that'll come on a later show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good score, Paul. OK, Linda. Linda. I can think of only three songs that he's done, one of which has already been mentioned. But I think he covered a Prince song, Kiss. So I'm going to go... Go with that. You're going to go with Kiss. We are looking for Tom Jones' top 40 singles. You're saying Kiss. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Kiss. Oh. It's good. Yay! Well done. <laughs> kind of equidistant between the two. In fact, exactly equidistant between the two scores. Kiss. Good answer. Uh, yeah, very good answer. 1988, uh, Tom Jones and The Art of Noise. It had a bigger hit with it than Prince. Prince only got to number did six. Did they? Yes, they did, yeah. <laughs> oh. Did, uh, really, you don't approve? I don't approve. I heard it. <laughs> Everyone does that with Prince songs. Well, it has bigger, bigger hits. hits yeah. yeah, Sinead O'Connor and <laughs> lots of others. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there we are. Sorry, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be quiet now. OK, on to Emma. Oh, well, the pressure's on now. It is. I need to redeem myself after yesterday's show. Um, I'm going to go with Sex Bomb featuring <laughs> Moose T. You're going to go with Moose Sex Moose T bomb. and, and Tom okay. Jones, Sex Bomb. You're going to go with Sex Bomb. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Sex Bomb scores you 26. Sex Bomb, Richard. Yeah, not, not so bad yourself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it reached number three in 2000. As you said, it was, uh, it was with Moose T. So it would also be a correct answer in Moose T top 40 singles. Yeah, which, of course, which, we have uh, already done. Yeah, which we have done, which we did in, in Series 1. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Well, now, it's quite a broad scoreboard there. Gary and Paul can feel justly proud of their low score of five. A fantastic answer from Paul. Um, pretty low, even, Fergus and Emma on 26. I mean, that's, that's not a bad score, but sadly, it does mean you are a little bit out ahead there. So you're going to want to, Fergus, you're going to want to delve into your back catalogue there and see if you can pull out a really good, obscure Tom Jones top 40 hit. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podiums? <laughs> OK, we are looking for Tom Jones' top 40 singles. Fergus, here's your chance. You are six points. I'm going to play it safe, and I know I'll regret it, but I'm going to say Delilah. Delilah. Oh, why, 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 Fergus? <laughs> <laughs> let's see if you manage to score less than 100 with that. Um, let's put it to the 100, see what they say. Delilah. Sixty-eight, that scores you, taking your total up to ninety-four. Richard, Delilah. Yeah, uh, reached number two uh, in sixty-eight. Unfortunately, scores sixty-eight rather than two. Sadly, <laughs> yes. OK, Margaret. Oh, this is going to be a real challenge, cos um, all the Tom Jones songs that I know have already been mm -hmm. backed, so I'm going to have to try and take a guess. Picking up on the Keris Matthew and it's cold outside, I'm going to go for a classic Christmas one and say possibly he's covered White Christmas. That's a punt. Yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> it could be music to Fergus and Emma's ears. Yeah. That. Or it could be a very, very shrewd guess. You are currently on 12. Your target is to score 81 or less. That's quite a nice high target for you. 
There's your red line. If you come below that, you're through to the next round. If you're above that or incorrect, <laughs> Fergus and Emma are through to the next round. OK, well, let's see how many of our 100 people said White Christmas. Oh, oh dear, oh, dear, <laughs> Margaret. Well, no, that was, you know, I think... That, you know, faced with a, a complete blank like you had, I thought mm. that was a very, very reasoned guess. Unfortunately, it's a wrong answer. It means you <laughs> score you. 100 points. But it's a good kind of wrong answer. Richard, White Christmas. Yeah, tell me something about I'd, it I didn't know. Well, I would like, I, well, I'll tell you something you didn't know. Tom Jones never released it as a single. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I think I did know that. But you did know yeah, that. I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, that's unlucky. He should do. Yeah. He'd should do a lovely do. version of it, I think. If he's watching. Tom. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Tom, go on. Come on, Tom. Go on. <laughs> so that means Fergus and Emma are through. That's great news. Gary and Paul are through. You, you, you can say anything you like. Even if you score the maximum of 100, you are definitely safe. So, um... OK, well, I was going to play it safe, but now I know I can go through. Um, I'm going to risk it a little bit. I seem to remember um, a stage musical. I don't know the type of the musical, but a song that Tom Jones recorded from it was called A Boy From Nowhere. A Boy From Nowhere. See that musical knowledge? I knew it was going to serve <laughs> you well in the end. Well done. Gary has given me A Boy From Nowhere, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many people said A Boy From Nowhere. It's right. Oh, I think this could be going all the way. Well, what a great answer. That scores you two, taking your total up to seven. Richard, A Boy From Nowhere. Yeah, A, a Boy From Nowhere, which uh, was released in 1987 and got to number two. And on this occasion, it scores two rather than 87, so it's nicely <laughs> symmetrical. <laughs> Very good. Betty? Um, I think I'll try Thunderball. Thunderball. Good call. You've now exhausted all my Tom Jones knowledge. I think that's the last <laughs> song I had in my little mental, <laughs> mental roller decks. Uh, you're going to go for Thunderball. You are currently on 19. You're not entirely out of the danger zone. You have to score 92 or less to be sure of going through. There's your red line, though. As you can see, it's quite nice and high up. Come below that and you are definitely through. Betty's saying Thunderball. Let's see how many people said that. It's good. It's good enough. Done. Congratulations there from Steve. Betty, that scores you one. What a brilliant score. Who'd have thought Thunderball scoring fewer than uh, A Boy From Nowhere? Yeah, Thunderball. Well, it's a long time ago. It's from 1966 and only reached number 35. So perhaps people didn't realise it was a single. But, yeah, very famously, the, uh, the theme tune to the film of the same name, which was also called Thunderball. <laughs> Eponymously titled. <laughs> very good. Uh, so that's the end of round one. And the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say, is Linda and Margaret. Oh. Dear, oh, thank you. dear, you just <laughs> didn't have that pointless Tom Jones knowledge, I'm no. afraid. Yeah, it's a shame. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, Richard, uh, what answers would have kept them in the game? Uh, there were quite a few pointless Tom Jones singles. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Uh, Barry Islands in the Stream, which was uh, comic relief number one from last year with the Gavin and Stacey people, Ruth Jones and Rob Brydon. Help Yourself, Burning Down the House, which uh, he recorded with the Cardigans, a talking head song. Right. Uh, I'm Coming Home, Something About You Baby I Like. And uh, the young, new Mexican... I can't believe you didn't get the young, new Mexican yeah, puppeteer, kidding. Margaret. Yeah. Well, I've heard it so many times. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Sing along. Uh, as a number six hit, actually. If I Only Knew, that's Margaret's theme tune. <laughs> uh, Little to, to Lucille, Love Me Tonight. These are all pointless. There's a few more, I'm afraid. Stoned in Love. Wow. Tom Jones International. Which is, uh, I think it's, that's the airport in Cardiff, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and with these hands, they were all pointless answers. As were, without love there is nothing, that's very true. And uh, you need love like I do. If everyone needed love like Tom Jones did, well. uh, we'd never get any work done. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. OK, Linda and Margaret, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless Tom Jones know-how that you needed to make it through. But remember, everyone gets two chances to reach our Pointless final, so we'll see you again next time for your final chance. Thanks so much for playing on Pointless. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's time for round two.
Now, obviously, only two pairs make it through to our head-to-head, -head, so one of the teams is going to be disappointed. You just have to make sure it's not you. OK, the category for our second round is... Measurements. Measurements. Look at despair on Fergus's face there. Um, can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And having reached that decision, can the person going first please step up to the podium? OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many British imperial measurements as they could. Richard, British imperial measurements. Yeah, the correct answers here are all imperial measurements used in Britain. Uh, some of them disappeared when the metric system was introduced. Some of them are still in use today, but all imperial measurements. OK, thanks, Richard. In round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. Now, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but you have to be careful because there's also at least one incorrect answer amongst the seven. Pick one of those and you will, of course, score the maximum of 100 points. OK, so the first set of seven answers are... Furlong, stone, laurel, fathom, mile, grain, inch. Bessie. Stone. You're going to go with Stone. He's a fine director. She's a fine film actress. Is it a good imperial measurement? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many people said Stone. <laughs> Not bad. 39 people. That scores you 39. Stone, Richard. Uh, yeah, it's the equivalent of 6.3502931818 kilograms. <laughs> I think, I think that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Now, do remember, there is at least one pointless answer in there. There is also at least one incorrect answer. Gary. I'm going to go with fathom. What do you think a fathom is? It's a uh, measurement of depth of water. Let's see. If that's a correct answer, let's see how many of our 100 people said fathom. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Eight people said fathom. Impressive low score. Richard, fathom. Yeah, fathom, it's uh, the equivalent of six feet, and as you say, traditionally used to measure the depth of water. Wow. Well, we've all learned something. OK, now remember, there is still one pointless, at least one pointless answer in there. And, of course, at least one incorrect answer. Now, Fergus, these guys have done you such a favour. They've taken two out. Uh, I went for the obvious one in the last round, so I'm going mm -hmm. to take a bit of a chance mm -hmm. and say furlong this time. So furlong? Yeah, I'm hoping it's to do with horse, horse racing. Were there any others that, that stood I out? I did uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and that <laughs> took me to um, grain. You're not going to follow your, your, your mojo, then? No. I'm You're going to go... OK, <laughs> OK. Behind. Let's see how many of our 100 people said furlong. <laughs> 19, not bad. Not bad at all. So furlong, Richard? Yeah, furlong, of course, still, still used in horse racing, and it's uh, an eighth of one of our other answers there. It's an eighth of a mile. Uh, so let's take a look at all the other ones on the board. Uh, as we say, mile, uh, we know is imperial. Inch, I think we probably uh, all know, would have scored you 73 points an inch. If, instead of going with your intuition, intelligence, learning, education, so on, instead you've gone with eeny, meeny, miny, mo, <laughs> you would have just added £250 to the jackpot because a grain is an imperial measure, a very, very tiny measurement. And the only other answer up there, laurel, uh, that was the booby trap, would have scored 100 points. It's, uh, it's an old English coin, but not an imperial measurement. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Right, well, another broadish field, Gary and Paul. Very good there, nice low score of eight. Keep that up and you're certainly through to the next round. Betty and Steve, 39. It's not a bad score, Betty, but uh, I'm afraid it does mean you are out in front. So, Steve, you're going to have to try and score as low as you can on the next pass. Right, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? Great. OK, we're going to put seven more answers up on the board. We are looking for British Imperial measurements. And here are your next seven options. Quark, litre, chain, 
Cran Hand Yard Pint. Again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless and at least one of those answers is incorrect. Try and avoid the incorrect ones as they will score you 100 points. OK, Emma. Well, I'm a chemist. But unfortunately, this is 2010 and measurements are done in metric. We're not really safe enough to go with a very obvious answer. Yeah. So I'm thinking hand because it's a measurement of horses. I need hardly remind you, you are on 19. You are only 20 points behind Steve and Betty. To avoid equaling or overtaking them, you want to be scoring 19 or less. There is the red line. Come below that red line and you're definitely through to the next round. Emma says hand. Let's see how many people said that. It's right. <sighs> It's good. Oh, look at that. Well done. Excellent answer. Well done, Emma. That scores you one, taking your total up to 20. Richard, hand. Yeah, a hand, as you say, is often used to measure horses. It's roughly one tenth of a metre. Six fingers. Oh, sorry, it's five, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, it's only six. Hang on. Yeah, no, that's right, yeah. Now, remember, there is at least one pointless answer in there, and there is at least one incorrect answer as well, Paul. I do remember from my primary school that um, when peasants were ploughing, they measured God, their how long distance. Ago we had primary school. <laughs> <laughs> Out in the fields, I just time has been kind. Yeah. Sandra, time. Has yeah. Been yeah. Um, uh, that when peasants were ploughing, they measured their distance in chains. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to go uh, with chain. Okay, we are looking for British imperial measurements. You have to score 30 or less. Yeah. The highest scorers are Steve and Betty on 39. There's your red line, below that red line, and you are safe through to the next round. You're saying chain. Let's see how many people said that. It's right. Go on. Well done, it's good. Go oh, not bad, though. <laughs> That's good enough. That scores you 10, which takes your total up to 18. Chain, Richard? Yep, chain, it's equivalent to 66 feet. Now, Betty and Steve, your maths will have told you, or maybe it didn't, in which case I apologise for being the deliverer of bad news, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm afraid you are, even before you've answered this question, you are the high scorers on 39. Um, so I'm afraid you will be leaving whatever happens, but you could sweeten your exit, so to speak, by winning a nice little pointless bonus for the jackpot for the others. What do you think about that, Steve? A, a noble, a noble... We'll, have a, we'll have a go show. for it. Why not have a go? Yeah. Um, well, they, they, in turn, have taken two of the answers off the board for you. What's it going to be? I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to go with quark. You're going to go with quark or quark or quark. I don't know. Quark, we'll discover. Richard, who knows all, will tell us later. Quark. I'm going to call it quark for now. Let's see if this is a pointless answer. And if it is, it will add £250 to the jackpot and uh, make you very popular with the two remaining pairs. Oh, dear, oh dear. Oh, well, imperial. as you said, um, you had nothing to lose. Unfortunately, that's a wrong answer. Sorry, chaps. It's purely <laughs> academic, but that does score you the maximum of 100 points. Uh, quark, Richard. Yeah, quark, it's, it's an elementary particle and constituents of matter. It's not an imperial measurement, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, if you had another go, what, what would you go for in there? Cran. Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly what you should have gone for first time. If we have a look, cran is the, uh, is the pointless answer there. It's, uh, it's the equivalent of uh, 170.5 cubic decimetres, <laughs> a cran. Uh, you can see why it went out of fashion. Yeah, possibly. Uh, and, of course, the other two, the What's other three there... What's a deciliter? There... Sorry to be... A deciliter. A deciliter. Yeah, a deciliter. That's... It's about a third of a cran, a deciliter. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So, yard, obviously, that was, uh, that's an imperial measurement, would have scored you 63 points, a pint. What would that cost you? 35, it would have been cheaper in the north, I suspect. Uh, <laughs> this leaves us with the incorrect answer, litre, which is, of course, a, a metric measurement, would have scored you 100 points. Thanks very much, Richard. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score is Betty and Steve. You were beaten by that round. Oh, yes. Measured out. Yeah, measured out. <laughs> measured out. I'm afraid you didn't have that pointless, 
imperial measurement knowledge you needed to get through, but everyone has two chances to reach our pointless final. So we'll see you again next time for your final chance. But meanwhile, thanks very much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Well done, you've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands, should you have forgotten, at £5,750. <laughs> OK, so you're going head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Olympic field events as they could. Olympic field events. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any current field events at the Olympic Games. The field events, of course, are those uh, jumping and throwing athletics events that don't take place on the track. There are eight possible answers, so while they're going for their guests, see if you can get all eight of them at home. Very good. OK, thanks, Richard. Gary and Paul, because you've done so fantastically well throughout the show so far, you get to go first. Is this a, an area you feel you have some expertise in? I, I, hopefully, yeah, yeah. When I, but a long time I was at school when I last did any of this stuff, so... Well, we know about when you were <laughs> at yeah, school. Yeah. Um, that, that was just before the flood. Yeah, it, yeah, it? yeah. And just before I went out and ploughed anything. Yeah, that's going to be good. What's it going to be? Yeah. Yep. We're going to go for Hammer. Hammer. OK. <laughs> Fergus and Emma. We're going to go for the discus, because it's a bit random. I don't know, is that...? Discus. OK, you need to give the most obscure answer you can. Yeah, we're going to say discus, because it's the only one I can what think they, of. OK. No, we're going to go for discus. OK. OK. <laughs> OK, Gary and Paul in gold. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Hammer. It's good, it's good. 34. <laughs> and Fergus and Emma, you're going to go for discus. Let's see how many of our 100 people said discus. It's good. Oh. oh! It's not quite good enough. OK, so after one question, that is 1-0 to Gary and Paul. Richard. Yeah, Fergus, at the start of the show, yeah. When I predicted you guys would win, what did I say? What's the one thing I said you should do? Uh, jump. <laughs> no, I, th I said, I said you've got to listen to Emma. Yes. OK, <laughs> rather than always sort of... You yeah. Know, if you'd said pole vault, that also scored 34, would have, uh, oh. would have drawn it. The, the two best answers we could have had. Uh -huh. uh, let's take a look at all the answers, uh, see if you've got all eight at home. Uh, pole vault and hammer throw both scored 34. Well done, Emma. Uh, triple jump, shot put. Uh, and then the, the top four, discus, Fergus. Uh, then high jump, yeah. long jump, and javelin was the most popular of all. It's the worst answer you could have given, 77. So 1 0 to Gary and Paul. Fergus and Emma, come on, got to get back into the game. Here's your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many characters in Faulty Towers as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're simply looking for the name of any character who appeared in more than one episode of Faulty Towers. Uh, and there are only eight characters who appeared in more than one episode of Forty Towers. All right, Fergus and Emma, it's your turn to go first I this time. Do you know any? This time. Okay, you've got an answer. I'm leaving this... it in Emma's hands. Okay, you're, you're following Richard's advice. Uh, right. You're looking a little bit concerned there, though. Yeah. I can't say that's the that's the stance of, a, of an entirely I, I relaxed I've man. Got, I've got somebody, sure it wasn't somebody, somebody no. in my head. No. Go with that. Someone in my head <laughs> who I can't think of their name. I've got a character in my head. I can't think of their name. He's called Fergus. I just saw uh, it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, so I'm. But so we're, we're just going to go with the major. You're going to go with the major. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Gary and Paul. Well, I, I was going to go with my major. Yeah, I was going to go with the major. Was the chef called Steve? 
Um, uh, well, I was thinking of the chef, but I thought he was called Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to disagree with you on that one. The only other one I can think is you had the two old ladies, the and I'm fairly sis. sure that one of them was called Miss Tibbs. Um, How sure? Yeah, fairly, 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 fairly sure. Fairly sure is good enough Tibbs. for me. Fairly sure, Miss Tibbs. Yes. That's, are you going to you going to put that in ink? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, John, we will put Ms. that Tibbs. in ink. I'm okay, Miss Tibbs. Okay, Ferguson Nama, the major in blue. Let's see if it's a correct answer, obviously, and let's see if it is. How many of our one hundred people said it? The major. It's good. Not bad, 32. And Gary and Paul, you have gone for Miss Tibbs. Mm. Let's see if that's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's correct. I think this might go a long way down. It's good enough. Oh. 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 <laughs> well done. So, yes, after two questions, it's 2-0 to Gary and Paul. <sighs> Richard. Yeah, that's a great answer from, uh, from Gary. Uh, let's see if anybody at home got all eight of these answers. Miss Tibbs and Miss Gatsby, they were, the, uh, they were the lowest scores. They were the two old ladies. Terry is the name of the chef, sort of Steve, Tony <laughs> area. <laughs> <laughs> uh, major Gowan, uh, the major, with 32. Let's take a look at the, uh, the worst four answers. Polly, of course. Sybil would have got 58. Manuel, 80. And... Basil, 82. Right. Well, I need hardly remind you, Ferguson Emma, the pressure is on. Lose this question and you are out of the game. You've got to get this right. Got to get this right. Because Gary and Paul are beating you 2-0 and it's best of three. OK, here is your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Balearic Islands as they could. We're looking for the name of any Balearic island with a permanent population of more than 100. Uh, there are four of them. Uh, you can't have the Isle of Cabrera, although the people visit there, it does, it's, uh, doesn't have a permanent population. OK, there you go. It is Gary and Paul's turn to start. Mm. And again, Gary and Paul, get this right, win this question, and you are through to the final. We're looking for a Balearic island. Gary. Formentera. OK, Gary and Paul are saying Formentera. I'm thinking that's quite hard to beat. I know my brother went to Minorca instead of no, Minor Mallorca. No, Minorca. No, that's not Balearic. That's, um, that's Canaries. No, Minorca is Balearic. No, Minorca is Canaries. No, Minorca is... I've been to I the beat Canaries. Beat. I've been to every island in the Canaries. Gran Canaria. Gran Canaria. We've got... We're up against oh, okay. the worst. We're going to have to say Minorca. Okay. Minorca. Right. OK, Minorca. Fergus is... is Adamant that Menorca is in the Balearics, not in the Canaries. We'll discover eventually if he's right. Um, meanwhile, Gary and Paul have gone for Formentera. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Formentera and if it's the correct answer. It's good. Oh, that's very good. Look at that. Six. Yes, that was possibly the one to go for. Nice low score. Um, Ferguson and Emma have said Minorca. Let's see if that is a correct answer. And if it is, how many of our 100 people said it? It's a correct answer. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I'm afraid after the third question, Gary and Paul have won this round 3-0. Balearic Islands. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way to do it. Let's take a look at all four. Uh, Formentera, uh, as you suspected, Fergus, was unbeatable, really using the advantage of going first very well there. Uh, Menorca is, is the best thing you could have said. Uh, ironically, for the first time, I think, in two shows, uh, you were right about something and Emma was wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a Canary Island. What a, what a note to leave on. Uh, Mallorca then was the second answer, and Ibiza with 38. That was uh, the most popular, the most obvious answer, the worst answer you could have gone for. OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. Uh, so the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Ferguson Emma. Bad luck.
hard lines where we're just glad to get past the first round. Yeah. Well, you've done very well all the same. You made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Um, you just didn't have that crucial, pointless uh, information you needed for this round. Um, but you've been fantastic contestants. Thanks very much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. But for Gary and Paul, it's time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Gary and Paul. You pull off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> but now you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an unbelievable £5,750. <laughs> now, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one could think of, OK? It's something no one has done today. Let's just hope you can find one now. But first, you've got to choose a category from these three options. Here are your choices. You can go for Hollywood actresses, classic novels, or US sports. Hollywood actresses, classic novels, US sports. I can see you're, you're euphoric with that choice. Wow. Well, <laughs> if I, the choice was down to me alone, I'd go for the Hollywood actresses. I think we can rule out US sports. Yeah. My special subject would be novels. Um, Specialist, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic novels okay. in particular. Go, go with that. Come. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. OK, having said, said it's my specialist subject, we're going to go for classic novels. OK, Sandra. there you are, Paul, your specialist subject. Perfect. Well, OK, let's find out what the question's going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Thomas Hardy novels as they could. OK, you're not looking too despondent about that. Richard, Thomas Hardy novel. Yeah, we're looking for any novel published under the name Thomas Hardy. We're not looking for any sort of short stories or plays or anything like that. Just the 14 novels of Thomas Hardy. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £5,750 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. The things that spring to mind, the obvious ones, like Mayor of Casterbridge, Tess of the D'Urbervilles... Manchester Chronicles? No, that's not, that's no, not no. Hardy. I know um, Tess of the D'Urbervilles uh, be anyone like that. Uh, but things like, I think, Adam Bede is okay. in my head. Um, more Hardy stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm not the mill on the floss, not what you said. Adam Bede I'm, keeps I'm, ringing I'm, a bell. Um, Tess of the D'Urbervilles would be the only other one I'd know. Um, 30 seconds gone. Oh, Casterbridge, goodness me, goodness me. Um, I, 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 right now, there's the only three I can bring okay. to Mary at Casterbridge, Tess of the Dobervilles, Adam, Adam Bede. Yeah, I think so. OK. OK, mm. yeah, we're ready. You've got your three, and they are Tess of the Dobervilles. Yep. Mayor of Casterbridge. Mayor of Casterbridge. And Adam Bede. Adam Bede. And Adam Bede. Oh, we'll put them in the order you said them, shall we? Yeah, yeah. OK. That'll be fine. The other, two are to the other two are just too popular, I know, but... OK, well, let's put those up on the board in that order. Tess of the D'Urbervilles, Mayor of Casterbridge, and Adam Bede. There they are. OK, we are looking for Thomas Hardy novels. You've got to try and find one that none of our 100 people got. This is your first answer, the one in which you had the least confidence. I mean, I think you're confident that it's a correct answer. It's, it's but, correct. Uh, I you're, know it's correct. It's not a... It's not a not one of his more obscure books. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tess of the D'Urbervilles. This, for £5,750, this has to be a pointless answer. 22. So, sadly, Tess of the D'Urbervilles is not a pointless answer, so, unfortunately, you only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. OK, so we move to your second choice, the one you have a little bit more confidence in. Yeah. The Mayor of Casterbridge. Yeah. Have you ever been to Casterbridge? No, I, and I've <laughs> never you, met its mayor. Do you either. know where it is? Somewhere no, in the black I have country, no idea. I'm going to guess. <laughs> Wessex, I'm um, guessing. Yeah, I should think probably so. <laughs> Maybe somebody watching is the Mayor of Casterbridge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, we are looking for a pointless answer. Yeah. We're looking for Thomas Hardy novels. The less well-known, the better. The Mayor of Casterbridge. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's a correct answer. This would have to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. 
Down it goes. Well, it's beaten 10. Look at that, 11. <laughs> well, that's better. It is We're better. moving in the right direction, yeah, yeah, I think, here, aren't better. we? That scored you 11. Sadly, that's 11 too many. The Mayor of Casterbridge is not a pointless answer. And so we come to your final answer. This is the one you had confidence in. Uh, this is the one that I don't even know was written by Thomas Hardy. Oh, I think no, it was. No. <laughs> when, have you read Adam Bede? Uh, I did a long time ago, yeah. But I'm not sure it was written by Hardy. So that's why I went for it. OK, well, that's, that's, that, we. that's the... Can we that's... use the we? <laughs> no, you said I. No, no, <laughs> stick with that. I went for that. It's an honourable <laughs> mistake to make. You have to, you have no, to go... We, no, we'll stick with we, just in case we win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in case. You may, you may. Yeah, we may well. You may. Hollywood you actresses now looking like quite an attractive option, yeah, possibly. Yeah, it was. Can we go back? <laughs> yeah, no, we can. So you should have said. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. We'll go back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah do that. Um, <laughs> no, I'm afraid... <laughs> We're committed to this now. We are looking for Thomas Hardy novels. Adam Bede. This has to be a pointless answer for you to win that jackpot. £5,750. OK, let's see if it is or not. Let's see if it's a correct answer or not. And if it is correct, let's hope it's pointless. Adam Bede. Oh, oh. bad luck. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is an incorrect answer. You didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £5,750, <laughs> which rolls over to the next show. But you've been amazing contestants, and you do get to take home our fabulous pointless <laughs> trophy. That's great. Yeah, well done, mate. <laughs> That's tough, isn't it? It is. I'd love to know who wrote it now. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was someone called Adam B. It may well have been. been. Um, well, Richard can tell us. Yeah, uh, Adam Bede was written by George Eliot, unfortunately. OK. Uh, so, good answer, but um, for, a, for a different question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the George Eliot question. So, yeah, yeah that, that would be an ideal one to, to give that answer to. <laughs> if I was looking for an obscure Hardy novel, I'd have gone for... Oh, obscure? Yeah, Jude the Obscure. Yeah, exactly. Novel, but it uh, would have scored me six points, so, oh, so, well, there we so are. the joke's on me. Yeah. Uh, there were four pointless answers. Uh, if you've got any of these at home, very, very well done. You would have just won yourself a, a chunk of money. Uh, a Laodicean, which is set around, uh, around an inherited medieval castle. Uh, the Hand of Ethelberta. You don't get children called Ethelberta these days, do you? It's gone out of fashion. <laughs> Such a shame. shame. It's, a it's a pretty name. name. It's a, yeah, it's name. a very pretty name. Uh, the Well Beloved, which was Hardy's final novel, uh, was also a pointless answer, would have won you the money. And the fourth on our list, Two on a Tower, a romantic novel set in the world of astronomy. That's true. not true, is yeah, it? It is, yeah. It is? Yeah. Sounds like a, a, an airport romance. <laughs> Have you heard of any of those? No. Well, you see, there's some honest. consolation. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to Gary and Paul, but you've been fantastic contestants. Thank you both for playing. Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over again, which means on the next show we'll be playing for, can you believe it, £6,750. <laughs> Join us next time, see if someone can win it on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>